Hello, welcome to the big internet matter. We've made it to the quarterfinals. Look at me wearing a shoe before a socks and a socks before a shoe. Are both the same? I guess no, because the order in which we wore it mattered. Today I'll talk about the quantum world. How the order in which we mat we do things matters in our world. Let's take a trip back to memory lane. When you learned about addition, you could have three items here and two items here. And when you add to add it, you put them together and you counted it. It didn't matter whether you added two to three or whether you added three to two, the answer was the same. But when it came to subtraction, you could compare three and when you take two out of three, you were left with one. But you couldn't take three out of two. So the order in which we did subtraction mattered and that is what we call the non-commutative property. And in, in that sense, you can think of what quantum. Now let, let me show you an example of quantum properties in the English language that we learn. Now if you consider the body part here, right, which is spelled E-A-R, we can rearrange the alphabet in here and we get R, A-R-E. But we all can know that's what ear and R mean the same different things. Now if you consider the arm, A-R-M, we can rearrange the alphabet in arm and we get what ram. Ram and arm mean different things. Consider the face, F-A-C-E. If we rearrange the alphabet in face, we get cafe. So we see there's some quantum or non-commutative properties even in the English language. I come from Ghana, a country in West Africa. And this year, Ghana was very instrumental in getting the UN General Assembly to declare the year 2025 as the International Year of Quantum Science and Technology. So you see, when we talk about quantum, at least you know an example of what some quantum properties. The first that we started with, the socks and the shoe, and that property of what the English language having words, having the same alphabet but what different means. But why, how, how relevant are these things to us? Let's do a quick revision of the numbers that we learned whilst growing up. If you consider the number two, the only way you can write it as a product of two numbers is what? One times two. But if you consider the number nine, you can write it as what? Three times three. So in mass, we call the, the smallest unit of numbers that you cannot break them further as prime numbers. So two is a prime number, three is a prime number, but nine is not a prime number, we call it a composite number. Why are prime numbers relevant? We all send messages across um, the internet or we make card payments. When you send a message, you want only the internet person to receive the message. You don't want anyone to eavesdrop or intercept your message. How do we ensure that the messages are properly encrypted and delivered to the right person without any interception? We do this through something which we call what? Cryptography, a way of what? Making sure we what, encode a message and find a way of decoding it so that only the internet people get it. And this relies heavily on prime numbers. Prime numbers have this unique property that if I give you any random number and I tell you to find which prime numbers multiply to that, if I get, give you a very big number like this, it becomes difficult for a classical computer to perform an algorithm to tell you which prime numbers gave you this big number. But with a quantum revolution, quantum computers will be able to do such complex computations in a very short time. Which means that these current systems which are built on board, the, 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 the hard uh, problem of um, decomposing prime numbers, will need a new system to make their messaging of, or the transfer of or messages or our um, e-commerce very safe. That is why in this, the year 2025, which is the International Year of Quantum Science and Technology, we are going to do a lot of education on quantum science and its importance in everyday life. So now you see, you now know some examples of what quantum things and why they are relevant to us. They are going to make complex things, which are now difficult for our classical computers to do, very easy to do. Thank you and watch, uh, see you in the next round.